Okay, I hope you really enjoyed the stack stuff from the last couple weeks. I'm a huge fan of the stack formation as long as you understand how you gain an advantage and how to hold on to that advantage with your different play concepts. As I said, we'll continue to bounce back into stack or bunch formations numerous times throughout the playbook so we can take a look at all of our plays, what we like out of stack, what we don't like out of stack. But we're gonna go back to our normal routine and we're gonna hit another concept today. And this is one of the most versatile concepts in our playbook. Yet, there are some variations that you can have on the outside depending on what level that you're competing at. So the play that we're discussing today is a play that we call seam. Now, we discussed this seam and this is one of the few times in the playbook where we're actually talking to the inside guy and not the outside guy. You see most of our concepts, corner, wrap, curl, hitch, most of those things we tell the outside guy what to do. There's a few times in the playbook where we wanna tell the inside guy what to do because he's got something specific on a particular play. So we're telling the inside guy on this particular play that he's running the seam. Now if you remember back to week two and our hiss concept, hitch on the outside, but it was a seam on the inside. Let's discuss that again, what a seam route is. And so what a seam route is, it starts with the burst release to the outside, so two to three yards outside the hash. Then he's pushing vertical. And that is what a seam route looks like. That is how a seam route is designed. So if you recall on a seam route, it's one of our thinking man routes meaning that the wide receivers have to actually see something on this play and may have to adjust their route according to what they see. So we get a middle close look and they are going to run this scene that you see right here. Push outside, push two yards up uh, outside the hash, okay? Because as many of you will know, the seam portion of it, if we ran double seams, the idea is to isolate this free safety when we really like seams and the double seam concept is when we have middle closed. When we have middle closed, then we can isolate this safety and we can force him to not only cover depth, but he's got to cover width from hash to hash or seam to seam. Okay, so that's when we really like it. So that's the first thing they see. As long as there's not a safety over their head, they are running this seam route right here. Okay, now if they get a safety over their head, this is where the adjustment comes in safety over their head we don't want to just push out and run two yards outside the hash on the seam because we've lost the leverage that we want this guy stays inside of us and now the throw has to go up and over that safety and it's just not very advantageous for us as an offense so anytime we get a safety over our head we are going to adjust this now we are going to seam release okay seam release this guy jumps inside of us jump over the top of him that guy stays outside of us, go inside of him, doesn't matter. But we are going to run a seam release and then we are going to push vertical. So that seam release, once again, gets us leverage or forces this guy to move right now. Always wanna force the defense to move. They move, we can gain an advantage. They don't move, they gain the advantage. So we're gonna seam inside to move this guy or to get better leverage to be able to get a cleaner release off of this guy and we're also bursting inside, sorry, we're seaming inside so that we can gain leverage on this safety or force him to move in with us. Okay, once we push inside and go vertical, we never want to chase back out to the safety. We never want to take away the advantage that we already had. So the seam gave us an advantage between us and the safety. So now if he wants to cover me, he's got to move to cover me. He doesn't move, I'm already in a winning position, don't take away that winning position. And then we can take a slight angle to the middle of the field. Remember on seam, right? If you're running down the middle of the field and the middle is open, safety over your head, which is the only time you should be running in there, right? We cannot cross the middle of the field. We cannot allow this backside safety to get involved in the mix and free up this front side guy from having to cover us. So middle open, Seam inside, push vertical. When you set your slight little angle, make sure you protect the ball, you protect the quarterback and protect yourself by never crossing the middle of the ball. All right, so that is the seam route. Those are our two options. Middle closed, 
We're going to stay with that lock seam on the outside, middle open. We are going to seam inside and we're going to hold leverage to the inside, never crossing the middle of the field. So that's the inside portion of the seam. Okay, where you guys have the ability to make some adjustments is with this outside receiver. Okay, so as I was talking about, the reason that we really call seam or a double seam concept is, it, is to attack the free safety. So that's what we really want this play for is we get free safety. I want my quarterback to read free safety and try to get one of these seams because that's where the void in cover three is and that's where we get a big play. So with that being said, I believe this outside portion of this route should tie into the timing that your quarterback will have if he reads this first. If he's reading this free safety and is going to try to hit one of the seams, how long does that take him? Okay, you have to determine that on your own. How long it takes him to read that and have a legitimate chance to hit one of these seams. Okay, we usually did it off of five steps. And by the time we hit our fifth step, we knew it was one hitch and gone to that, uh, to that seam route if we liked it. Okay, so let's say we have that. We're looking at the seam and now the seam's not open. This Sam, Sam linebacker carries that seam so we don't have it. So now I want to make sure that this outside route, whatever it is, meshes with that timing. I don't want my outside receiver sitting out there for two seconds while my quarterback's going through his seam read. So when I finally get out there, this corner's sitting there waiting just like my receiver and he's able to jump it. So that's what is dependent on where you're at, where your quarterback's at, what kind of throw can he make? What kind of timing does he have? How quickly can he get through his reads? So I've done lots of different things on the outside. When I was with the Rams, we would run a deep 18 yard comeback here. So now I had plenty of time to be able to read the double seam in there. If I didn't have it, I could hold on my fifth step and the timing would be good and I could get the ball out on time to my deep comeback there, okay? High school, I'm never going to ask my quarterback to be able to throw an 18-yard comeback, especially if he's got to throw it to the field. So we just can't do it at the high school level. So the high school level, we're running a 14-yard comeback. Okay, so he's got to speed up his process a little bit, but obviously the speed isn't there on the outside. The corners aren't quite as good. So even if we don't have perfect timing, we feel like we can get away with it. I also played for the Cardinals. When we would run this, we would run a 14 yard stop route. So we would actually turn back to the inside and then we'd throw it back to the outside to keep it away from the corner, but we ran it at 14 yards. So I had to understand in that particular case that if I had middle, middle closed and I was reading those seams, I had to get through it quickly and be ready to hit that back foot and let that outside route go on time. I couldn't waste any time to the inside or we wouldn't have an advantage to the outside. So you guys are going to have to determine that based on a lot of different factors. Where are you playing at? What level are you playing at? What's the speed of your receivers? How good are the corners? What is your quarterback capable of? How quickly can he get through his reads and get to that outside guy so he's not late and it doesn't become a problem? Those are all factors that you've got to bring into play when you're designing this play. All of them can work. They've all worked at the different offenses that I've been in. It's just simply where are you at and what works best for you. Okay, so with that being said, okay, whether we ran a stop route here or whether we ran the deep comeback here, one little adjustment on this play. And again, if you're at the level to be able to do it, this play is not nearly as good if you lock your stop or your comeback on the outside. Okay, because if that happens and you get some sort of cover two out here, right? This free safety takes the seam to the inside. Now you'd like to be able to hit the whole shot or outside on that because you've got this free safety to, to cover inside. You got all kinds of space out there. But if you lock that, now you've got to throw it up over the corner. There's nobody threatening the corner. He can fall back and cover that. But some of us, high school level, hard to be able to get your guys to see that and make the adjustment. So sometimes you have to live with that. So what we would always do at the higher levels is we would obviously turn this into a fade route. So anytime we got a hard corner on this, okay, 
you would outside release, you would hold your width, and whether it was a stop or the comeback, we turned that into a fade. So if that happens, now we isolate this free safety, we get the best of both worlds. If the corner's off, we've got a stop or a comeback that we can work to. Even if the middle's open, the middle's closed, we can read seam to that outside stop or the comeback. But most importantly, we get cover two. This guy's playing hard. Instead of giving him a shot to cover that comeback or stop, we turn that into a go route. This safety's in a bind. And now we gain an advantage and the play becomes good against any coverage. And that's always what we're looking for, right? We want plays that are good against all coverages. We don't have a lot of them, right? Because there's always nuances and things that defenses can do to usually take away one of the receivers or make a play not good against one particular coverage. That adjustment to the outside, if you're able to do it, can give you an advantage against any coverage that you're going to see. Okay, so there you have it. Love that route. That route, I'm sure it's in everybody's playbook already. It's just a matter of how you do it. If you lock the seam, now you lose an advantage against a middle open look. If you give your seam runner the ability to see that guy over his head, not that difficult for the snap. Is there a guy there? Is there not a guy there? But if you can have that adjustment, now it gives you an opportunity against middle closed and against middle open. Same holds true on the outside. If you're locked into having to run a stop or a comeback, not quite as good against every coverage. If your guys have the ability to see that, get to the corner within the depth of their route, very similar to our hitch routes, you get to the corner within the depth of your route, turn it into a go route, now we've got a shot to go two on one against that safety. So whatever level you're at, whatever details you're, you're able to add in can only make that play better. If you have limitations, still a great play, but it can stop you from really being able to attack certain coverages if you can't make those adjustments.